G'day. Since I started the Adventure Reviews channel on YouTube, I've received quite a few emails from people asking me exactly how you run retro games on the newer OS systems of today. Now I use Windows myself, but these same methods will work on a Mac or Linux or whatever OS you're using. Now as I talk about this, I'm going to be going to various websites and I'm going to use YouTube's flash enhancements to allow clickable links. So you'll see little pop-up bubbles turn up on the screen. If you press that it should take you to the website that I'm talking about. Now rather than trying to simply force everything to work in the newer OS's which can be quite complicated, the way to go about it is to use emulation software that actually allows you to either emulate the old OS's such as DOSBox which I'll go into in a sec or to actually load up a completely virtual environment such as virtual PC and actually run the old OS itself inside a window of your host operating system. Okay. Let's get started. Now just before I start talking about the ways to actually run the games, we're just going to talk a little bit about the games themselves. Now the first thing is abandonware is illegal. Okay, all those abandonware sites, they're pirate sites. So if you're a true fan of adventure games, you really want to track down the original copies and they can be found on eBay. If you go to adventure fan forums, there's often places you can trade them. There's a number of stores on the internet you can find that specialize in selling older games. And due to the recent resurgence in popularity of adventure games and the possible, with any luck, moving into the mainstream again, some of the really large digital downloaders have even started to repackage and sell the old adventure games, places like Steam for example. The point is that abandonware is illegal. Okay, so you've got your game, you've opened the box, and being older games, you're gonna find they've got tons of CDs. Now, this isn't a necessary step, but I really think it's the way to go, and that is you can turn these CDs into what are called ISO files which are files that contain images of the CD, which you can then load up inside the emulation software and act as a virtual drive. So why would you want to do this? Well, mainly because it's just a lot easier than keeping track of discs and having them all over your desk and all that kind of stuff. It just means that you can have the games installed on your hard drive and everything you need is on the drive. And because these are older games, even with all the files on the hard drive in these CD images, they're usually going to take up less space than current modern titles. Making an ISO file is as easy as just a couple of mouse clicks. Any CD-ROM software usually has an ISO creation option. I recommend using a piece of free software called ImageBurn, which is very, very good burning software and completely free for PC. So all you need to do is load up the application, select your DVD drive, select the save point, I'll use the desktop, and just hit the button. That's it. And uh, here's our file. That's the ISO of the CD. The first piece of emulation software we're going to discuss is called ScumVM. ScumVM is named after the scripting engine called Scum that LucasArts used to design all its games. ScumVM is an open source project, so it doesn't cost any money to use. It's completely free. And it's actually ported to a number of different platforms. So not only can you play it on Mac or PC, you can also play it on things like your iPhone or your PlayStation 2 or a various handheld gaming devices. It's a very excellent piece of software and the guys that make this, we all owe a great thanks. Now with ScumVM, all you need to do is load it up, hit the add game button, browse to directory, click add game, go to graphics and override it and change it to high quality 3 and aspect ratio correction, hit OK, then hit start. That's it. Game's running perfect emulation. And just a note, ScumVM doesn't use ISOs, you just, all you need to do is just copy the files directly off the CD onto your hard drive. And of course there's also a full screen mode if you prefer that. Okay, well next we're going to use an application called DOSBox which is an OS emulator that actually emulates DOS. So the games themselves, as far as they're concerned, they're actually installed on an old computer running DOS. So there's, again, no compatibility problems. Once again, a tremendous thanks to the makers of DOSBox. Now this is a little more complicated to use than ScumVM, but it's really not that hard. Okay, so just run DOSBox and you can see nothing really happens, like we haven't even got a C drive as you can see here. 
So the first thing I want to do is write out a config file by following the commands that I'm typing in here. And then just when you've done that, just close DOSBox. Now browse to the directory where you installed it. I used C drive slash games slash DOSBox. And you'll note that I've also added two new directories called games and ISOs. Okay, so in that directory, what you want to do is load it up in your text editor and do all these various changes. Now, there's quite a lot of options in here. These are the changes that I make and they work fine, but you may need to tweak it yourself. So go to the DOSBox forum and there you can get a lot of help from the very helpful people there. Now, this works for me. Like, as you can see, I can now load my files. Now, many DOS games don't need CDs. You just copy the files into a directory, then you CD into the directory, you run the executable and bang, the game is now running. But you may ask, what if my game requires the usage of a CD-ROM and I can't just copy the files into the directory? Well, of course, DOSBox has a solution for that. Remember those two DIRs I made? Now we mounted the games DIR as the root for C drive, that's where our games are. And there's this other DIR called ISOs. Now in here I've placed an ISO file I've made with image burn of the Shadow of the Comet CD. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna tell DOSBox to load that ISO file up as a virtual CD drive as drive D. Now you can do this inside DOSBox, but what I like to do is create a batch file inside the games DIR. Now a batch file is just basically a series of commands that you would normally type in at the command prompt. So what you do, we're going to go new text document and then edit it. And in here, we're going to type in the command to load the ISO as a DVD drive. And then we just rename the file load.bat. Okay, now we can load up DOSBox and we'll switch to the C drive and then we'll try to go to D and we can't because there's no CD-ROM. So now we'll just type load and it'll load the disk and as you can see you can now switch to D and get a DIR listing. So all we have to do now is just run the install to install the game and in this case you just type install. Now in this particular game's case you actually run it from the CD-ROM so we just switch to D drive and type in shadow and there you go, game's running. Now, because a bat file is just a series of commands, we can actually put the load game command into the load.bat file. So let's just copy the load.bat file and rename it SOTC and then edit it. Now, all we need to do is to play this game, as we know, we have to switch to the D drive and then type shadow. So we'll just type D drive on one line after the image mount and then shadow after that and then save. Okay, so we're all done. Now all we need to do is load DOSBox, go to C drive and type STOC and the game will mount and play. Okay, so that's pretty much it for DOSBox. The only other thing is that if you have a game that requires more than one CD and you need to do disk swapping, in the mount command you just type in all the different images you have. Now. For this example, I'm using Pandora's Directive, which is a 6 CD game. So in the image mount command, after you type in the directory path for the first image, you just press space and then type in the next path. So all I'm doing here is taking that original load file that we had before, the shadow of the comment, and then copying the path information to the ISO six times, changing them to the right ISO, and then just going up to the top and pressing delete space, delete space, delete space, and then making sure at the end I have the dash T CD ROM. And that's it, that's how you load multiple CDs. So this is why we use batch files, because we don't want to type out that massive command every time we load dogs box just to play that game. Now, to actually use the multiple disks, all you need to do is hit Control F4 to swap to the next disk in the chain. So when the game asks you to insert disk 2, just press Control F4 and then press OK. Oh, and in DOSBox, if you hit Alt plus Enter, it'll switch to full screen mode. And as we only change the options for a higher resolution in Windows mode inside the config file, so when you switch to full screen mode, it will actually run in the original res of the game, which can improve performance. Okay, so I've run out of time and I'll cover Virtual PC in part two. So thanks for watching and I hope it didn't confuse you more than help you. 
see you next time.